Hello everyone and welcome to my spooky TBR. This video is a pay promotion with Disney Book Group in celebration of the recent release of Conceal Don't Feel by Jen Kalanita. It is the seventh book in the Twisted Tale series which are all about fairy tales with a twist. Some of the past books in this series give a twisted version of Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and The Little Mermaid for instance. Conceal Don't Feel gives a twist on the beloved Frozen by reimagining the story as if Anna and Elsa never even met. When a magical accident happens that erases both Anna and Elsa's memories, not only of magic, but as sisters, they are separated for protection. But when Elsa unexpectedly finds herself as a young queen, mysterious magic starts to happen and questions from her past start to form. Will the sisters ever be reunited? Like I said, this is the seventh book in the series because two more are coming out in 2020. One based on Peter Pan called Straight Till Morning and one based on Cinderella called So This Is Love. Seal Don't Feel released on October 1st, so be sure to check it out in stores today. This is the first book in my TBR, and I'm excited for it. So it's not necessarily spooky, as in like scary, but it is October, and when you think of October, you think of a lot of magic and paranormal things. And what is this book full of? But of magic. So I classify it technically as spooky, but not really spooky. So of course, it's the first book of my TBR. As you know, I'm a huge fan of retellings, and I adore Frozen, so I can't wait to read this book with a new perspective on it. Moving on to the rest of my TBR. I have a lot of books I want to read this month. I am participating in a readathon as well. The Spookathon, which is happening from the 14th to the 21st, I think. Either way, my TBR for that will be released in a few videos, so be on the lookout for that. But I thought I would share with you all the other books I'm planning to read this month because if you haven't surmised by now, <laughs> I'm a very seasonal person. So when it comes to September, I want to read kind of fall, darker things. When it comes to October, I want to read all spooky and paranormal things. When it comes to Christmas, I want to read Christmas things. So we are in October. So this video is going to be chock full of like spooky, paranormal things, you know, magic, vampires, all that kind of stuff. I thought I would celebrate by wearing this shirt I just got that has vampire teeth on it. And I am clearly obsessed with it. Vampires for the win always. Let's get on to the rest of the books I'm planning to read. The second one is also not spooky like Conceal Don't Feel was, but it has paranormal aspects in it. So I kind of classify it as spooky. And that is Wayward Son by Rainbow Roll. I meant to read this last month, but sadly I did not get around to it. So I'm going to read it this month. Wayward Son is the sequel of Carry On. Carry On is kind of like a parody of Harry Potter, if you will, and it's full of vampires, magic, and things like that. I will say I haven't heard a lot of amazing things about this book. A lot of people say it's a much more serious tone than Carry On, which I am hesitant about now because I think the whole appeal of Carry On was how lighthearted and fun it was, and I was hoping the series would continue on with that, but this one's gonna be much more serious and darker, so we'll have to see, you know, how it is. Either way, I'm really excited to read it, and I can't wait to read more of Simon and Baz. Next up is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This one, I think, might be out by the time you're seeing it. I don't have it quite yet. Um, this one is a adult fantasy book and it's all about this like secret society and college if I'm not mistaken. I don't know too much and I don't want to know too much. I have heard it's very detail heavy which kind of worries me because I'm not the best with fantasy on that but I'm I'm eagerly anticipating it. Everyone is. I'm excited to read it. I'll love it. I don't know. Like I said I don't know much about it. I know it's secret society. Like that's all I really know, honestly, which is probably not the best thing. Next up is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. This is her first book in a new series, I believe. And this one is all about the 1800s New Orleans with vampires. And we have this girl that has a, like, a history, this girl that's like a murder happened or murders keep happening wherever she goes and she has to keep her family safe. And then she finds this, like, underground society of, like, magicians or illusionists and vampires play into it. Again, with this one, the reviews are iffy. A lot of people, again, are saying it's very detail heavy and that vampires don't even play a huge part in it to like the last quarter of it which I'm kind of sad about because I, I love vampires that's my I've always loved vampires Buffy um uh, but I don't know I'm still really anticipating this is probably one of my most if not my top five anticipated books of the whole year so I'm really hoping to love it it is very it's long it's, it's almost like 450 pages but either way I'm very excited to read it and I hope there's going to be tons of vampires in it. Next up is Now Entering Adamsville by Francesca Zabia. This is a new book by her and it's set in this town called Adamsville and we have a character. What is her name? Her name is Zora. This crime that Zora has been framed for and she didn't do it so she's trying to prove her innocence 
innocence. And she's in this town of Adamsville and it's very kind of a creepy town. There's lots of ghosts in it. And now this ghost like TV show has come to town that's like filming a ghost documentary, which I think are mucking up things or something like that. So what I'm getting from this, a lot of people are saying it's like kind of like Buffy meets Stranger Things or something. I don't know. But either way, I love her writing. I'm excited to see her take a like an atmospheric tone and kind of darker and creepier. I think it's going to be amazing. I really hope it's going to give me all the feels. Then I have Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. I am so stoked for this book. Shay Earnshaw also wrote The Wicked Deep, which I read last year, and I loved. It was like a tale of witches and stuff. This one is told in the woods, I think, and this girl finds this guy in the woods, and magic happens, and I think murders happen in the wood. I'm not exactly sure, but... I think it's gonna be amazing. Again, the reviews, all my most anticipated releases this month, the reviews have been kinda iffy on, so I don't know where I'm gonna fall out on the spectrum with them, with reading them, but nevertheless, I'm excited for all of them. This one probably the most so, because she just writes such atmospheric October reads that I cannot wait to dive in. The books I just shared with you are books I am 100% reading this month, but outside of the Spookathon as well, I'm planning to read like three or four for that as well. There's still more I wanna read, because if you're like me, when it gets to seasonal reads, you just save them for one month out of the year, then you try to read like 50 of them. <laughs> it's possible. It's not. <laughs> but here I am. So there's like four more I still would like to read. Um, so if I get around to these, that'd be great. If not, that's okay too. First up, Rules for Vanishing by K. Alice Marshall. This is a YA um, mystery thriller where this girl has to go find her sister in the woods, but the woods only appear like, there's like a path in the woods, and the path only appears like, one time in the year and then you get lost and then like things like that it says she steps on the road she might not come back but she has to try the road is calling her so it sounds really kind of creepy and eerie and i'm for that um then i also have the bone houses by emily lloyd jones i still don't know yet if this is classified as a contemporary or fantasy but basically it's about this family that works at a graveyard and they're like grave diggers and they have to control like because ghosts come out of these graves a lot so the deal with that it sounds really cool and i haven't heard too much about it but the feedback you've given me is like it's amazing so i'm like i I should probably try to read it this month. So maybe I will read these two YA ones. I don't know. Then I have a couple thrillers that I would like to read this month. Number one, Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. Everyone has read this but me apparently. This, with thrillers, I really don't know much because I think that's the way to go. This one, I know it's about a woman that meets a guy and she learns that he has a wife but they start a relationship or I don't know, something like that. It's weird. I've heard the ending is very jarring. So, you know, just get scared this month. Why not? And then The Turn of the Key by Ruth. Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is a author I've read all her books of but there has been yet there has yet to be one that I love. This one's about a nanny and the child gets murdered and or the child dies and she's framed for it only she knows it's not it and it's also like a very technological heavy house. I don't know the whole plot with the child it scares me so I'm like maybe not I'll read this. I don't know but I've heard good things about it. So yeah those are all the books I'm planning to read this month, not including the books I'm reading for Spookathon. Stay tuned for that video coming up very, very soon. But are you like me as well that you just read all the seasonal and spooky things, you know, in October and you just put all of your books that fit that category and save them for October alone and then you get overwhelmed with the sheer amount that you have to read? I would love to hear if you're in the same boat as me. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video.